Welcome class, this is Mr. Weckeser teaching about two variable inequalities today and two variable means a plus b is less than possibly c. So inequality, remember, these are two variables. So this actually wouldn't be a c here, you'd probably do a plus b is less than 10. Inequalities means equal not equal. So any means not an equal, an inequality means equal. So it's not equal. So we're going to learn about things that are less than, greater than, less than equal to, greater than equal to. We also need to think about when we graph these in grade school, we did open boxes for these. When we graphed, right, this direction. We did closed boxes for the equal ones equal less than and greater than or equal to. Today we're going to graph them and we're going to have um, for these that are less than or greater than we're going to have dotted lines. So a little different and then this one will be a solid line and then you're going to shade in above it or below it depending if it's equal to or less than. So we'll talk that in a second. Let's continue. Circle each inequality. Inequality has a sign like this, so that'll be a circle, circled, and this is not equal to, like we talked above, and this is inequality, it means not equal to, so this is correct, this is correct, and this is correct, and this is not correct, because that's the equal sign, okay, number two, complete inequality with a less than or greater than, so negative two, is less than 1. 0.05, well you can't really compare these, you have to have the same number of decimals, so you can put another decimal there. 0.05 is less than 50, right? So it's like saying 5 cents is right here, and this is 50 cents. Which one's bigger? Well, 50 cents is. This is 8 over 16, and you can compare the top numbers of all fractions, and 8 is less than 16, for this one, you can't compare these because the denominators are different. So you need to get the denominators to be the same to compare them. So let's get them to be the same. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 is 12. So 12 over 5 and 7 over 4. Still not the same. You want to make the denominators the same by multiplying this whole thing by 4 and this whole thing by 5. So you have 48 over 20. You have a box here. And 5 times this whole thing is 35 over 20. So this one is smaller. What questions do we have? All right, math usage. A boundary is a line that separates a coordinate plane into two half planes, one of which consists of the solutions of the inequality. For example, y equals 2x plus 1 is the boundary of y is less than or equal to 2x plus 4. So let's talk about that real quick. 2x plus 4 is y is less than is going to look like this, right? So we're going to start at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a dot. 2x means 2 up and 1 over. So it's less than or equal to, so it's a solid line. And y is less than, so you're going to shade in all of this information, which is pretty cool. There you go. Circle the inequalities that have a dashed boundary line. Underline the inequalities that have a solid boundary line. So remember, these are less than and greater than are going to have a dash. The ones that are less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, we'll have a solid line like this. And these guys will be like that. So this one right here, right, the less than or equal to, will be a solid line, right, solid. This one is less than or equal to, so it's going to have a dash line. We're going to underline that. Again, underline this one because of this. 
And this one is going to be circled, dashed. Problem one, graphing a linear inequality. Got it. What is the graph of the inequality? Y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 1. So we got to graph that little guy. Underline the correct words to complete each sentence. So first it says the boundary line of the graph is going to be solid or dashed. What is solid because of this guy right here? It's equal to, so it's a solid line. The test points does not satisfy the inequality. And we're going to talk about test points in a second. And the graph of the solution should be shaded above or below the boundary line. It's above. Now let's look at this real quick. Let's graph it. So we have 2x, negative 2x plus 1. So we have plus 1 is your y-intercept. Negative is down 2, right, over 1. So here's your other line. It's a solid line. Luckily, I just did that. I had to catch myself a lot of times. And y is greater than, so it's going to be above it. So all of this will be shaded in. So the test points are 0, 0. Does 0, 0. And at, from this graph, it looks very close, but it's actually above it. I made a very bad graph here, but it's going to be above it. So it does not satisfy because 0, 0 will not be in that graph if we had did it again. So I made a bad one. Number 10, graph inequality. So let's graph it and um, show you why the test points are not in it. This is a much better example here. Um, so it, it has a point here and has a point here. And so if you see the actual perfect graph and you shade in above it, this right here, zero, zero, is not included. So that's your test point. Those are your test points, not included. Problem two, using your linear inequality. Got it. The sign shows the number of tickets needed for a small or large rides at the fair. You would like to get it on both types of rides. You can buy 60 tickets with $15. You decide to spend more than $30 for tickets. So you decide to spend more. What are the possible combinations of a small and large rides that you can take? Use a graph to find your answer. So circle the greatest number of tickets you can buy with $30. So the answer is going to be 120. <coughs> So you think if 16 equals $15, 60 tickets, right? $30 should equal 120. You just times it by two. Times this by two. So you'll times this by two. Circle the symbol that represents no more than. So this is no more than, right? Less than or equal to. Complete the model below. Relate, the number of tickets for small rides plus the number of tickets for a large rides is no more than 120. To find X, let X be the number of tickets for small rides. Let Y be the number of tickets for large rides. Okay, so 3X plus 5y is less than or equal to 120. There we go. So now graph the inequality represents a combination of rides. So they want you to graph this here, but how are you supposed to do that? What are you supposed to do with 3x plus 5y equals is less than or equal to 120? Well, you need to solve it, and I'm going to solve it. And you could solve it for y and x if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to solve it the way we know how to graph just for y by itself. Minus 3x. So 5y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 120. Divide by 5 to get rid of the 5. 
So y is less than or equal to negative 3 fifths x plus 120 divided by 5. And so we know that's going to be close to a couple numbers here. So it's not going to be 100% correct. So we have to try to simplify it. But 120 divided by 5 cannot be done 100%. So unless you do 24. So all right. Not 25, not 20, but 24. So your wider step is 24. You're going to go down 3 and over 5. So down 3. 1, 2, 3, over 5. 1, 2. Down three, over five. So here's your line right here. There you go. No number of small rides is here. And this is the number of large rides. So there we go. Complete the sentence with the whole words below. Use each words once. So we have combinations. We have shaded whole. All points with whole number coordinates in the shaded region represent the possible combinations of small and large rides. All right, what is the graph of y minus 4 is greater than or equal to 2 absolute value of x minus 1? Now we're on a whole new level. So complete the reasoning model at the right. I need to solve for the inequality of y equals, and now we're just going to solve, and I'm going to give you the answer here. So we're going to take this 4 here, add it to this side, and we'll get that. And we did this yesterday in class. We know that this right here is your stretch. This is your x is 1 and your y is going to be 4. So the stretch is 2 or your slope. Have a good day, guys. These notes will be posted tomorrow. So this shifted 1 unit right and 4 units up. 0.15 is a solution of the inequality shade above the boundary line. So the graph, the absolute inequality down here below, and I said stretch of two, I one and four. So here's the stretch. Two is the stretch. Your vertex is one, four. So here's one, four. Stretch is two. So it's two, Problem four. We're almost done here, guys. What is What inequality does a graph represent? Circle the parent function. Y, absolute value of X, right? This is the parent function. Circle the function that shows reflection of the X axis. Here's the X axis. The negative means reflect over X. And so, any questions on that one? All right, a couple more questions real quick before the end of the chapter and you have lesson review. Uh, underline the word, complete each sentence. The graph is not stretched. The graph is not compressed. Circle a function rule that completes a sentence. Transformations of the parent function are shown by what? And this is on the board. We talked about all yesterday. Here's your stretch. Here's your negative x. And here's your y. We didn't talk about this. We didn't talk about the negatives. So the vertex, we have four units left. Up, x-axis, y-axis. Use your answers, exercise 1820 to write the function. y is greater than negative x plus 4 plus 3. All right, that's it. Have a good day.